So here is the all the work I've done struggling to find a roof rack solution so I can mount all three of my 100 watt panels on my curved fiberglass roof. I can't remember, I think there was other options I thought about, but like the original option was let's just do what people say and VHB the panels right to the roof, but I have three of them and there's not the, the roof is curved so there's just no way I can I could comfortably VHB tape three panels on this roof unless I got rid of my air conditioner so I didn't want to do that so what I did was I was like okay I, the only real way I can get around that is if I mount it to a roof rack so I, I need to be able to get rid of that curve in the roof to mount all three so started looking at roof rack solutions I didn't want to drill in the roof I almost did I bought I bought these rain gutter roof racks which my fiberglass roof doesn't have free rain gutters they're occupied by the the actual the roof the high top so I had to get these artificial rain gutter things and as I started lining those up, it, it, it didn't seem like it was going to work, and I couldn't get access to the underside of the roof to drill into, so I just said, screw it. So I need to sell these. And then I finally caught on to the idea of Unistrut, and I, could, I figured I could make a Unistrut roof rack, and I could still use the VHB tape idea so I could tape down the, the roof rack. Um, which I know is sketchy and I was like, it, it may not work, so I'm gonna try it and see if it's safe and if it's not, I'm not gonna do it. Uh, but I ended up, I could only find this steel Unistrut here and it's really heavy. And um, I knew they made aluminum Unistrut, but I couldn't find it. And then just randomly, I found this website, Zorro.com, that sells it and it's, and it's pretty cheap and they'll ship it to you. Um, actually, it's not that cheap. It's it's kind of it's a little bit pricey because they ship it to you, and and they they have like limits on what they ship to you. So the, if you wanted to buy, you couldn't just buy like two ten piece segments. You had to buy it in packs of eight, which costs like two hundred dollars. So I found like a coupon code and just said screw it. I really want these ten piece segments so that I can cut them to size and just have two simple, just a single roof rack made up of two of those segments. So that's where I'm at today. I've got, last week I've got the f aluminum feet made. I just used these unslotted segments, cut them into s the right size feet. Then I bought really wide VHB tape. So I'm gonna tape the feet to the roof. Everything's super light because it's aluminum. And paracord it down and see if it's going to be safe. So this is how I'm doing the feet. I got solid, um, the non-slotted channel. And I put a spring nut in there and put it under here. And then I've just got a washer and lock nut, or lock washer, and a bolt screwing it down. So that's how the feet will go on. Alright, so I went out and cut these to the right length and then I put them up on the roof and laid the solar panels on them and tried to find... Uh, I laid the feet out and rested the rails on them like that. And then I laid the solar panels out and tried to find since the roof is curved, where I should put the feet along the length of the, the rail so it has maximum surface contact. Uh, <clears throat> and then I marked it with these plus signs. So I was able to find two good spots for two feet. And then the, th the third foot, essentially wherever I put the third one, let's see, I'll...
So you see I had like two of them on, and then whenever I put the third one down, it was usually too high. Like it wouldn't lay on it. It wouldn't lay on it flat like that. Sorry for the video shaking. Like it, because the roof is curved, you can see in my apartment it lays across it. But out there, only two of the feet were flat, and then the third one it was kind of like that. So, and I think I can bend it, but I'm not exactly sure. So, I really did want three feet to be touching to have the most amount of VHB, but I'm, I, I'm not totally sure it's necessary. But I will, I think I'm going to put the third foot on anyway, and then. If, when I go out there, I'll see if I can bend it because it's it's aluminum, so and it's fairly thin, so I actually can bend it a little bit. All right, here's the one of the final iterations on the rack. So I painted it with a primer coat, uh, and I might add more paint, but I've got the two feet um, tightened down, and then I, I'm not sure about this one, but I thought about it today I just have this middle piece crossways so it, it stabilizes it in the other direction for one leg it doesn't really need that because the panels themselves will stabilize it that way but this will make it so I get a third foot for the VHB tape so I think with all the VHB tape as long as it's a good flat connection a good flat um, um, constant touching against the roof I guess I don't know how to say that um, should be extremely strong like totally permanently bonded to the roof and then it's just a matter of securing uh, mounting the panels and then securing it what's up everybody I wanted to do this update video I, I didn't really record much of the the part of where I actually mounted the rack onto the van so um, I'm just gonna fill in the details here so at this point um, what, what's today it's late August so we're still in the quarantine times um, but I do I did finish everything so let me show you what I've done here All right, so I got this sweet ladder that collapses, and I'll put a link in the description for that. It's been a huge lifesaver. Uh, but let's go up onto the van. And here's what we're looking at for the panels, all mounted. So essentially what I did was I, I cleaned off the roof surface and put the VHB down for all three of the feet you can see these are all the roof is curved but it's still somewhat flat so by using three f segmented feet I could find three flat points um, the sketch there's some sketchy part which is where I had to instead of bending the rack I put these wedges in here to sort of level it off a couple other ones there too uh, but it's like these really strong weather resistant wedges uh, then so once I got the once I got it sticking and mounted I put uh, the Dicor lap sealant around all the all the, uh, the surface points to protect the VHB so then it was mounted uh, I did both sides then I got the panels mounted on, and you can see I have these uh, solar end clamps that I, I'll put a link in the description for that too. Um, the end clamps are clamping them, clamping them down, and then there's mid clamps here, uh, clamping them down. It's all just using the, the same unistr the Unistrut spring nut technology, so working really well they're really solid uh, I've done a couple test drives with them over on the interstate at like 55 60 miles an hour and it's so far it's pretty strong but I will keep checking on it 
Uh, then what I did was I got this, um, actually it's on the other side, but I got steel, steel harness. Uh, it's the kind of steel that you use for uh, making like fencing. Um, I can put a link in the description for that. I didn't like this too much, but each each panel has one of these steel wires connected to it, and then it's connected to a, one of these. Um, I don't know what they're called. It's like a titanium lanyard. Um, you guys probably know what it's called. I can't remember what it's called, but it's just hooking onto the plastic, this thick plastic uh, cover port here, these clips for the fan. And these are pretty strong, but I didn't really trust it, so I didn't feel too confident about it. But if in the worst case scenario, a panel were to blow off, which it really shouldn't, but if it did, it would first, like, it would first have to resist this. So that's the first line of defense in an accident. And then the last thing I did was I have, you can see this black paracord. And this is 700 pound paracord. And it's mounted to the mounting bolts for my air conditioner, so that's really strong. And all I did was thread this paracord through the, the rails and all the panels. So there's two fail safes if something were to go wrong. If something were to break or blow off, it would it wouldn't in theory it wouldn't blow off and like kill someone. It would just hang off the side of my van or something like that. So feel pretty good about it. Uh, then I got it all wired in. Uh, let me show you some of that. So the, the solar was a kit and it came with these wires. So I wired them in and what I did was I drilled into the vent. This is the black tank vent. I drilled holes into it and used these gaskets, um, entry gland gaskets, which I can put a link for that too. So that's water sealed. And that just goes into the van. Uh, it goes into the van right in there. Comes out and I just kind of put it down into the charge controller there and that's really it. it it's working like it should um, got a little switch on there if I wanted to disconnect it so the solar's totally done so that's where I'm at I did a few other projects like uh, fixing some water leaks uh, but everything's working now, like it's it's totally ready to go. So I can start, I can leave, I can try living in it. Don't really know what I'm gonna do. Um, the plan I had originally thought out in my first video is not going exactly like it was going to. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is take it on some trips and feel it out and just take it from there so thank you for watching